And this is the last lightning talks of this year's Europython. Aww. You're allowed to aww. 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 You're also, if I tell a terrible tractor joke, you're allowed to boo me. So can we practice that too? Would you like me to actually tell a tractor joke? So a tractor turns into a field and immediately gets stuck. It was a magnetic field. Ooh. Oh. I love you. I love you all. So um, can we have the first speakers setting up? It's OK. So uh, this is the floats, I believe. So it's always sad as we get towards the end of Europython. And we've enjoyed ourselves during the week, I hope. Has anybody here not enjoyed themselves? One hand. There's always somebody sticks their hand up. You're just attention seeking. Ah, okay. Well, come to me later and explain why you didn't enjoy yourself. Are We're you done. ready to go? Yeah. Fantastic. Take it away. The floats. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to jump into the river. Uh, so I, I, most people have seen people floating down the river. We're going to do it tonight. Uh, we invite everybody there. So uh, the uh, address is... Uh, Schaffhauser, Heinweg, uh, uh, 93. Uh, we will do it at 8 o'clock. Uh, take a picture of the slide. Yes, you can take a picture. You can also uh, just Google. It's not that difficult to find. Like, there's the website. Everybody took a picture? <laughs> I see a lot of pictures. OK. So we're now at like uh, six, uh, nine people, whatever we're. Nine-ish. Uh, judging by how many phones are we going up, it's going to be a bit more. This is the end point, so you just, uh, th there's three bridges that you cross, and then there's like a beach thing that you just swim towards, and then hopefully you can get out alive. <laughs> uh, so uh, you need a swimming gear, a, a towel, uh, optional. If you have like a waterproof bag, like they, f they float on these bags that, to put your clothes in. Uh, how we'll uh, have a limited transport of clothing for people who have not got a waterproof bag, but she's only... That, that is at the cost of ice cream, okay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and at some point she cannot, uh, she doesn't scale. Um, okay, so uh, you should, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so think about your own safety. We are not responsible for you drowning. Uh, so please make sure you can swim. Uh, yeah, we take no responsibility. Thank you. If anybody would like to help how carry stuff, uh, also welcome. Yeah, OK, thank you very much. Big round of applause for the floats. So on the last day, we have a bit of a struggle um, it being the last day, you know, people leave early and things like that. There aren't quite so many people in this room as there have been before. But we need, can we have, uh, Daniel, are you? Excellent. Um, so, uh, but we need to make the same amount of noise because the Lightning Talk speakers have the same amount of nerves and they've put in the same amount of effort. So I think we're going to have to practice that again. But this time you're going to have to try harder. It was excellent the other day, but now you're just going to have to put in an extra, I would say, 30, 40%. Uh, not, not being exact here. So um, can we all please... Uh, practice our clapping as loudly as possible. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, and you're already whooping. Can we have some foot stomping, please? No foot, st no foot stomping. I didn't hear a single. There we go. Oh, with the rest, with the rest, with the rest. The whole thing. Oh, never mind. Take it away, Daniel. What the frog? Uh, I brought my own uh, lightning talk timer so uh, I can keep track. Um, I'm talking about a game that I wrote for Pi Week uh, earlier this year. And Pi Week is a competition, online competition, um, at piweek.org, uh, where you have one week to write a game from scratch in Python. Um, and this time the theme was six, uh, and I wrote a game called What the Frog, uh, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, so in this game, you have to, uh, you're a frog. Um, I'm going to use the complicated keys uh, because I have six directions to jump. So let me start at the beginning. Um, so you can let me move the cursor out of the way. You can chain jumps. So I jump up, uh, and the goal is to use your jumps uh, to collect the flies. But you can only use each jump once. 
Uh, so uh, there's some element of having to time your jumps correctly um, and do the right order. Uh, and there's this slow motion, and then there's this water effect that I spent ages on. Uh, oh, I'm out of jumps. OK, so I have to restart. Ah. <laughs> well, I've completed the game in both the easy mode and the hard mode, so it is possible. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, OK, let me. Uh... Uh, yeah. <laughs> So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the technology that I, uh, I used in that uh, game. Is that good? Yep. Uh, so, OK, title. Uh, so I drew all of the graphics in um, SVG in Inkscape. Um, I make a lot of use of uh, Inkscape during my Pi Week games. Um, so that's the title screen. Uh, but for this, this Pi Week, I also used um, a lot of NumPy. So uh, one of the things that you can do with NumPy uh, is construct uh, lists of coordinates. Uh, so this is the natural way of doing that in NumPy, and uh, I can plot that. So I've just drawn a square with a little uh, notch taken out so you can see which way it's pointing. Um, if you insert a list of ones um, into the uh, end of that array, so you have three coordinates, and the last coordinate is one, then you can use affine transforms. So NumPy has the ability to you define an array like that. Uh, and this is taking the um, coordinates straight out of the SVG. And so actually what I did was uh, implement a function called matrix and then evaled it uh, because you have a week to write a game. So you have to get through this. Uh, so define an array, uh, sorry, define a transform like that straight from the SVG. Uh, and then the, you can use the at operator to transform all of those coordinates and draw it like that. Um, so that's really convenient. It's really fast. And it turns out that if you're sending those to OpenGL uh, for use in, uh, to, to render, uh, you could just do that, um, which uh, gives you the coordinate list in exactly the form that I need for sending to OpenGL. Um, I also use NumPy for the water surface. So uh, I've got a, uh, an array levels, uh, which is uh, the, um, the heights of the, the water above uh, flat. Um, and that's, that's then plotted. I've just set uh, an initial um, offset in, in one of the uh, uh, values to reflect the frog jumping into the water. Um, I can define some arrays for convolutions. Uh, and then I should be able to generate the next frame. So it's convolving the uh, levels of the water, and there's also velocities of the water. Um, so there is a spring effect, and that sort of propagates. Um, and what I've done here is uh, this will take a little more time to render, uh, but you get the whole animation. Uh, I, don't, I don't know uh, NumPy very well, so I, and Matplotload, so I don't know what that's doing there. Um, so the next Poly Week uh, is September, um, and I encourage you all to participate. Um, it's great fun. A big round of applause. The award-winning game developer, <laughs> Daniel Pope. Um, can we have the next speaker come up? And, oh, you're already set up. This is great. I like this. Uh, you're already there. OK, right. No more tractor jokes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Vyacheslav. I'm from Russia. Uh, this is my fourth EuroPython, and I enjoy it much. Uh, the atmosphere and the talks. Uh, I'd like to give a big thank you to uh, organizers and all of you. Uh, and actually, it's not a technical uh, talk, but um, I was uh, encouraged uh, by, <laughs> I'm sorry.
Uh, yeah. Um, I had to stop this thing for a while. Uh, this was the next one. Uh, actually, uh, I'm a backend developer. I like my job, but also I like biking uh, uh, to commute to work and just for fun. Uh, of course, um, while it's not snowing uh, in Moscow like this, uh, so when uh, Switzerland was chosen uh, for uh, Europython, I thought, just thought, why not to combine uh, things I like? Uh, so we decided to have this kind of road uh, over the mountains. Yeah, and I like the mountains, I forgot to say, but you know, uh, in Moscow, uh, just in the middle of East European plain, there, there are no mountains, really. Uh, so we we like to we would like to combine uh, uh, stuff we like and we build this route uh, to make su such a challenge for us uh, and to enjoy things you see Python is there mountains and the bikes as well these guys uh, accompanied me uh, throughout my journey uh, this is my elder son and my former teacher and a very experienced traveler who crossed uh, all the continents, uh, Yuri Maznev. So uh, we started just like this, then we bought our bikes, and we started from Milano. Uh, I, I will share some pics, uh, just making comments. Uh, it was hard. Uh, sometimes it was really steep and hard. We had to carry all stuff with us, uh, including laptops. <laughs> over the Alps, you know, uh, and uh, sometimes we just uh, had rest. Um, during uh, the midday heat, uh, we had to uh, learn how to make, um, put up a tent. Sometimes we fixed our stuff uh, and uh, sometimes fixed our tires like this. And of course, we met beautiful nature of Switzerland because it's a famous country <laughs> like this and like this and even like this in the middle of the road. Sometimes uh, uh, we found some eatable stuff uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes uh, the nature literally tried to bite us. But otherwise it was very nice uh, and pretty. Of course we learned much a lot, uh, a lot of, about uh, cultural heritage of Switzerland uh, and of course, uh, we met people. Sometimes we uh, went through the places uh, where English was of no use, and we had to uh, remember all, 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 all I know uh, from school uh, Deutsch. Uh, sometimes we got lost in, in fields, and sometimes we just sat on a cool lake shore like this, and of course there were mountains, there were plenty of mountains, and even more mountains, and very high mountains. <laughs> and uh, when we felt like uh, we didn't have enough mountains, we took on a uh, hiking by food, uh, to walk uh, by snow, uh, but our shoes were not good enough, uh, and finally, we finished our, our grand tour. Uh, it was hard not to fall in love with this beautiful country. And of course, uh, uh, with this city. So we're happy to join this conference, uh, to take part in this great event. What did we get in the end? Uh, hello, Python. Uh, that's it. Big round of applause. Uh, so in a moment, Christian is going to uh, give us a talk entitled, What You Can Do in 10 Minutes. Do you not understand the rules? I hope this is a joke. <laughs> five minutes, you get five minutes. Okay, Ready? cool, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so what do you think you can do in 10 minutes? Good luck, yeah. So, something that you can do in 10 minutes, if you're Italian, is to cook an amazing pasta. So you can cook spaghetti, aglio, olio, peperoncino, and guess what? 
It will cost less than 10 francs. <laughs> and what else? So what else do you think you can do in 10 minutes? So um, we are running this conference it's called uh, Python Pizza. And there was this guy, and he said, um, I saw like 10 minutes talk. It's not really for me. No time for question. Um, yeah, it's not for me. But I want to challenge you. Um, because you can tell amazing stories in 10 minutes. And it's for everyone, even for first-time speakers, especially for first-time speakers. So it's pretty easy, actually. It takes 30 minutes. <laughs> you think about a concept, sorry, about a topic. And then you think about four or five concepts uh, to explain that topic. And you write down uh, your one or two minute stories for each point. It's pretty easy, you can do that. Now you have a talk, right? What else do you need? Now you need pizza. <laughs> uh, but this is the wrong picture, because you need the right pizza. So you need a conference, and guess what? We have two conferences happening in Germany um, in the next weeks. So the first one is Berlin Python Pizza, 23rd of August. That's the domain, it's pretty easy, berlin.python.pizza. And this is the website, and it's going to be a night event, OK? And then we have Hamburg. You can guess the domain. It's hamburg.python.pizza. It's pretty easy. 30th um, of November. And you have to join the pizza revolution, OK? Thank you. That was a two-minute talk, about 10 minutes. Um, so next we have. Um, we, we have a quick talk. Would you, do you want to come and set up? So we have a quick talk about these um, cool gaming gadgets. Um, and then we're going to have a giveaway. Um, so yeah, if you, do you want to bring the laptop up and give the? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. OK. Uh, hello again. Cool. Uh, my name is Sebastian Roll. Uh, I'm from Norway. And this is my first uh, EuroPython. Uh, it feels like a different experience from uh, the other developer conferences that I attend to, um, in that I know so many of you already. It's ridiculous um, how open this community is. Uh, another thing is that. Uh, in other developer conference, I feel kind of special because I'm a chemical engineer uh, and I became a software developer. And here, that's, that's, uh, I feel very at home because everybody is uh, the exact same way. So there's a lot of domain knowledge here uh, that's not just uh, specific to IT and software. And I like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to give away two devices. and. You need to turn it on, the microcontroller. There's a teeny tiny switch there. So we're going to play a game here. Let's see. Is it black and white? Ooh, cool effect. Let's go with no effect. OK. So the game is like this. Uh, let's start it up. Oh, yeah, let's make it bigger. The screen is blue. And then you press one of these four buttons, and it will either turn red or green. If it turns red, then you pass it on to the next guy. And you have one in 200 chance of this happening. And that means you want it. So and if you want it, stand up, and everybody will cheer you, even though they're all disappointed it wasn't them. <laughs> so good luck, everybody. Uh, let's go through a couple more demos. This is the Tetrix one. It's kind of cool. You're going to see, you've seen Tetrix before. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> moving on. Um, let's see if I'm better at this game. 
This is called 3D Dungeon. So here we have some 3D. Oh, it's moving very fast. Yeah. So this was originally uh, made for this guy, who was the previous, uh, his previous version, and it has a smaller screen, 64 by 64 displays. Uh, that's why it's so small on this one. Okay, sorry for looking down, but I'm trying to do a lot of things at the same time now. Uh, third one is a weather report. So this is just to show that you're gonna have uh, temperature, pressure, and uh, humidity sensor on this uh, device. You have uh, nine axis motion. Oh, it's so difficult. This one, nine axis motion. You have a GPIO extender, 16 extra pins. You have a micro SD slot. Um, you have some RGB addressable LEDs here. You have a, a surface mounted speaker uh, with amplifier and also a microphone with amplifier. And this is a 2.8 uh, inch uh, 240 by 320 um, display with capacitive touch. Um, if we look at the back, we have an ESP32 microcontroller. So if you start using this, if you come to the Sprint, uh, you might feel that you're not even working with a microcontroller because this has a 240 megahertz uh, dual core processor. It has um, four megabytes of flash, and this one actually has eight megabytes of RAM. Um, so you don't really have to work as if it's a restricted system. Um, yeah. No sound yet. <laughs> that means there's still hope. Did you mention you soldered all those components on by hand? Yes, we did. <laughs> we tried and we failed and then we succeeded for about 11 of them. And we got them to the workshop that we had the first day. And um, it was a, we had to work four people in a group but uh, it seemed like people had a good time. Uh, people stayed during the coffee breaks, which is always a good sign. Uh, and that's why we wanted to, uh, to continue this with the sprint tomorrow. So I guess uh, to, f to conclude, uh, we are Byte Barista. It's uh, just me and a couple of friends. We like to have fun and make things. Um, we have a tutorial that you can uh, go through. If you come to the sprint, you're gonna be running through the examples, all the components, how to use them. And uh, I went to Hong Kong and I saw one of these things and I wasn't allowed to play because there was such a long line, a really long queue. So then we made one ourselves uh, with an ESP32 microcontroller and we brought it to a conference. Yeah, it's always good to have a buddy that's trying to psych you out. <laughs> so yeah, um, you can do a lot of cool things. Uh, if you know how to do software, uh, try to enter hardware. It's very simple now comparatively to what it used to be, and it's a lot of fun to have physical things uh, that you can create and uh, give people a smile on their face. Thank you very much. That's awesome. How cool is that? Just keep passing those around. Maybe occasionally make a sound of disappointment or something so we know where they are. <laughs> I think we thought a one in 200 chance was uh, small enough that, um, that they would go relatively quickly. The idea of giving it to the people in the front row was a reward for coming to the front of the audience and, um, and kind of providing more feedback to the speakers. Uh, but yeah, I guess you were all unlucky. That's a shame. So, you ready to go? Yeah. Take it away. Round of applause, please. Thank you. Uh, it was fun uh, so far, and you laughed a lot, so uh, I think it's time to relax your uh, face muscles a little bit, so uh, to prepare for the next, next round of fun talk. So I have a little bit of a dull subject. A protocol for Python schemas. Uh, the mountains are just a cover slide, but I'm amazed about people cycling over these mountains. That's really, really impressive for me. I'm not a sports guy. 
Um, schemas, what are, what are schemas about? You all know about data types. And basically, data types are about trust uh, typing hints. I use typing hints because I tr don't trust myself to program it correctly, especially I mix it up after two weeks. I don't use them if I just do a five-line uh, script, but if it grows into a 5,000-line thing, I need type checking and data types. And the same thing applies to data which comes from the outside or goes to the outside or is interacted with the user. And that's why schemas are there for. If I write my data somewhere in the database and read it back, that can be schemaless. Nobody's touching the data. But if I go and send it to somebody or receive it from somebody, screen, user interface, whatever, I need a schema. Schemas are in a way the same for data as data types are for a program. And uh, there are a lot of solutions in, uh, in Python to def define schemas. There are things integrated, libraries integrated with a mapping system like Django, SQL Alchemy, Graphene for GraphQL. Uh, yesterday, I think, I learned about Strawberry. Very nice. Ah, thank you. Um, <laughs> There are standalone, uh, standalone schema libraries, Cerberus, Calendar, Kim, some of, the, uh, some of them are defunct. Marshmallow has a large following and is very active. I like the one called Schema because it says what it is. And uh, there's Validir and Voluptus. You cannot combine these schemas. There's no interoperability. All of them have a little bit of different API. Internal organization is completely different. Uh, all of them rely on some data types. And the same uh, issue uh, we had with connecting to a relational database. And back in 1994, they wrote DBA, DB API version 1.0. That was for Python 1.4. And there was a guy called Mark andre Lemberg who wrote uh, a SIG, and we all know him in this conference. So, these things uh, got standardized very early, were interoperable, so you could switch from one database to the next. And I thought, could we do the same for the schema library? So I could use a Django schema in to talk to GraphQL, use it in Strawberry without writing a mapper specifically between those. I thought about, uh, we don't want to sort of set uh, internal structure, standardize completely, but provide a protocol with a few operations, validate, uh, validate some data, export them to an external system, import them from an in, uh, external system, and maybe name them, have a joint naming, so we know JSON is JSON, like uh, MIME types, XML is XML. Pickle is sort of an, uh, one of these schemas as well and then have some mechanism to handle schemas and export them and transform them into some kind of standard representation and read it back. There is a PEP 593, annotated types. And once I discovered this, it's not yet implemented, it's in extension types. Um, this could be a handle to transport schema data from one schema to the next in sort of a little standardized representation. A minimal protocol to allow round trip between different schemas. If you're interested, uh, take a picture. I have some, uh, some GitHub uh, proposal there. I don't show this in, in the time, but uh, you might take a picture or you might clap. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Okay, do we, has anybody won yet? Who's holding them at the moment? Oh, we have a winner. Stand up. Big round of applause. A big round of applause of jealousy. And where's the other one right now? Where's the other one right now? I can't, over there. Still blue? Red? There you go. Oh. 
So if it gets to the end and it has to start to go back, um, could you press it twice instead of once? <laughs> Let's try and, try and uh, make a winner sooner rather than later. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm single. I'm not the first time to be here. So some of you already know me. I'm in the registration area. And sometimes probably my instance or some problems. So probably I have to ask you more about my, your request. But anyway, I'm very happy to be here to help you. And also, I'm very enjoying the conference. So I want to share something, some about experience with me and why or why you have to come here. You know, this one is a euro Python, which means euro. It means that many, many countries will be counted. Uh, we love Python people in long, uh, many countries. So we are here to try to um, make some conference and also make some talk, uh, also make, uh, make connection with everyone. What kind of purpose of you? So this means, first of all, I have to thank you, every one of you. Speaker, sponsor, and participate, and of course, I'm a volunteer, so I have to thank myself too. Without you, <laughs> without all of you, we cannot make it happen. So, thank you. Big round of applause. And I think uh, I, just ha I have some mission, so pre before my talk, I have to introduce myself. Uh, I belong to the organization which is called Force Asia. We have GitHub. And we have Sami. Okay, that's all. So this is my question is, what's the purpose of you come here? I already asked before, and I just put the question behind because I want to introduce more about others. This one is a personal pleasure. It's also uh, one of my mission. Sorry, and also you have please, please go to the website or Google. Me, you can call it. And also we have so many community and conference around the world, and uh, you have. PyCon US, Euro Python, and also we have PyCon APEC in Asia. So if we have a chance to go to Asia, I'll be there. And uh, here's a map of PyCon in Asia. Look, see, uh, we probably have uh, seven, uh, seven countries or seven cities we have PyCon. So if you have a chance to go to Asia, please yeah, check the map and also check the schedule. Probably you have interest in Pinchy Talk or Pinchy Culture will be there. And also all of the uh, Kai Kang in Asia, we will welcome the uh, English speaker. So don't be shy, try to call proposal in there. And also I just introduced Pai Kong Taiwan and uh, will be held in September. Okay, China Japan will be held in September too. And, uh, oh, Another one is a community because I don't know how many time. Uh, PyCon Asia, I think this is also is only 70, but I believe it's over 70, just uh, uh, information I got. And uh, also community in Taiwan, and uh, others is British contribution bay. Sorry, a little brush. And uh, Paul, uh, sorry, this, this is not my, I forgot to delete it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the topic. So. <laughs> okay. No, so, because I have a question about it, just because I heard the question, no, same question I'm before that. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to wrap up. 10 <laughs> seconds? <laughs> 10. Okay, maybe 10 minutes, okay. <laughs> then, why the purpose to go to Postpart? Postpart is open source conference in Taiwan, the biggest source one. And also, why the purpose to go in Taiwan? Because it was the, the 70% of conversions, conversion and 90% is the top. So, please go to Taiwan and uh, also. That was amazing. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, actually, I mean, you've just given a fantastic round of applause to Noah, but um, he has also, you saw the yellow t-shirt, he's been helping out and solving people's problems for the last five days. Uh, so, can I have another round of applause for Noah, please? Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm working at the Qt company, which is one of the companies behind the Qt project. And I just wanted to show you how in less than five minutes you can start your first desktop application. So first, motivation. Desktop applications are there. That's the thing that maybe you hear, or hear all the time, but it's not true. Uh, you know, one of the first things that you need to do if you have everything web-based, what is? Open a browser. Desktop application there. So, fake news. <laughs> so, desktop application is alive. 
That's an application are live, and also you don't need to use uh, build different application for Windows, for Mac, for everything. You have many options, and sometimes maybe it's not really the best option to use the whole browser to have something that works everywhere. I mean, I don't remember the name of the framework. Neutron? Proton? No, I don't remember. So. Uh, I want to, of course, if you don't know Qt, it's pronounced Qt, not Qt. It's a cross-platform written in C++, and guess what? It's available in Python. So you can just go there and install PySci2, which is a set of official Python bindings. So you go this, uh, then you write the first thing, which is the, all the boilerplate for application, application, some window that we need to define, and then you execute the application. What is this a special windows? It's just a class. You said, OK, let's have some widgets, a label, and a button put it on a layout, and that's it. So then you have some magic that maybe connects a button to do something, and then that's it. You have already your, your application. So the whole enchilada of this thing is that if you go and execute this, you can have this amazing application to have one million stars in, on GitHub that just show hello, error Python. So uh, let's go back to the slides. Uh, not convinced, there are other options out there. There's also the PyQt, all some bindings for Qt. There's Kiwi, there's Toga with this amazing project Beware. So just go for it, pip install PySci2, and if you want to un understand what is happening under the hood, all these things is in the talk that I gave on Wednesday, so you can go there and check those, the, all this C++ black magic. And thank you very much. They have a couple of links there, but most importantly, please, as always said, support your local groups. Uh, we have this amazing community in Berlin, many meetups, so give back to the community. Thank you. We love a short lightning talk. It means we can fit in more speakers. So we have about 10 minutes left, so uh, we may be two to three more talks. You ready? Yep. Round of applause, please. Uh, so this, this is a usual art, art gallery. Uh, as you can see, there are some paintings. There are some description near them. There is author. There is a date. There is a message some description of this painting. Oh, and for me, this is also the same with Git repository. We have also the piece of art, our code. We are, should care about our code. So in, in Git, we have commits that are represented here in paintings. They uh, have also some description. So my name is Grzegorz Kocjan, and I'm a nerd. So usually, we, when we work, uh, we want to fight with some bugs. And we find with some bug, uh, we can uh, find this bug in one piece of code that looks like this one. And what is going on there? So we will call the git blame to find, hey, who's the author of this code, and ask him what this code is doing, and what happens if he gets fired. As you can see, it is really difficult to find uh, on the stock photo a uh, developer being fired. So what's more? <laughs> possible when I wrote this code only God and I understood what it does. Now God only knows. That's the usual case that happened to us. So what we can do? We can check the commit message. So how it looks like? This should fix it. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> so what we can do with that? We can write better commit messages, fix issue for adding a new order, explain what are exceptions, what the case was exactly and what we did to fix this. This is very important. If you like your coworkers, do this. So there is another thing. Not, you, not always we can find our issue uh, by looking at uh, git blame. Usually, sometimes we need to dig through all the history. But what's that mess? It looks like this one, yeah? And what we ex should expect is this one, yeah? So our art gallery, we don't want to throw our piece of art to pile of uh, random commits. So instead of this, we want to this to receive this one. How to achieve that? With simple git, com git uh, commands, git commit amend, git rebase master, and the black belt of git users, git rebase interactive. <laughs> so to use all of those commands, we need to use git push force, which is really dangerous. <laughs> But don't worry, with great powers came great responsibility, and we should take it. So there is another important thing. There is also git ref lock. It could save our lives because it stores all the things that we did in our local repository. 
So whenever we delete something, we break something, there is ref lock, but one important thing, it is only local. So if we delete our repository, it will gone. And that's why we can, that is the way how we can create our art gallery for our most important art Python code. But what is important in this uh, case is that we are not only creating art gallery, but we're creating a library. We are creating a knowledge that is stored in our repository. We can store there every hour issue, how we solve it, what was, what was the cases, what are the issues that we had, and how we solve them, what were the alternatives. And this is called codified knowledge, and this is term uh, that Kevin Henney is using very much, and this is very smart guy, so we should listen to him. Thank you. That's great advice there. <laughs> Do you really work with somebody called Scary Terry? <laughs> so have you heard of the new TV program for former farmers? It's called The Extractor. <laughs> yes, I think that's for you. OK. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Efe. It's my first time in EuroPython. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for everyone. Uh, do you know where is this place? Uh, do you have any idea about it? Yeah, of course, Istanbul. So who haven't visited Istanbul before? Can I see the hands, please? Yeah, there's a good chance for you guys. Uh, actually, first of all, I'd like to mention about the community in Istanbul. Uh, we have really active community, active Python community in Istanbul. We are almost 9,000 people. <coughs> We organize weekly meetups. Next week, we will organize the 94th one, actually. Also, we organize Django Girls workshops and other hackathons. Uh, this is from a weekly meeting of ours. We have more than 60 attendees in each meetups. This is photo from a hack day we organized two months ago. We have a large diverse community. I mean, really diverse community. So we thought about that. Why don't we organize a Python conference instead of these weekly meetups? Uh, so the idea of PyCon Turkey came out. We haven't approved uh, by the Python Software Foundation yet, but we are exchanging uh, emails about it. But still, we are planning to organize it in next February uh, in Istanbul. So it will be our first PyCon, actually. As you guessed, we need a lot of help because of this. If you are interested, please subscribe to the newsletter in uh, pycon.istanbul. Actually, this is a real uh, domain name. You can uh, check it if you don't believe me. Thank you for your patience. See you in Istanbul. Thank you. So I'm afraid we are running out of time. And now um, this will be our last lightning talk of the evening. I have a big aww. 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 Who's enjoyed the lightning talks? Who hasn't enjoyed the lightning talks? This is going to be a small one. Oh, just give me a big round of applause. <laughs> Take it away. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Um, so I got something simple enough that we can still understand it even after the whole day of code. And these are three ways to format your strings. They produce the same result, but one is better than the others. It's F string. Um, 3.6 only, but soon everybody should be here. Right, let's time it. Let's see what is also faster and not only more readable. We are running it 10 million times, and f-string wins by a significant margin. So uh, I'd like to see more code which would use it. I'd like it to be consistent and to use mostly just this. And for this reason, I have written a tool called Flint. Um, so uh, And let's try it. Let's run it on the Flask code. So I got here the Flask. Uh, it's just checked out from the repo. We'll run the tests. We'll do it real fast. Now, um, we will install Flint. And we will do Flint Flask. OK, it's, it's not so much we found 43 expressions which we have transformed, but it would save you some hour of work and you would be more certain that you got it right. Let's run the tests again.
and it worked. I've tested it before, I admit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so we have changed 18 files. It's, uh, don't run it on the, something outside of the version control. Use Git. Uh, you will see everything we changed, and you can make nice, correct commit. Um, give me a start on GitHub if you don't mind, or report your issues. Uh, I'm working on making it work for multiple lines of code, but now it converts only single lines, but that should be like, not, I don't know, 80% of your use cases. Yeah, so don't do it by hand. Uh, use that tool, Flint. <laughs> Thank you very much. So stay where you are. We're going to set up for the closing session now. Um, I hope your hands aren't too sore from the, all the lightning talks because there's lots of clapping to be done as everybody's uh, thanked for all the work that they've done. Um, and this, this should be, well, more or less my last moment on the stage. So I will see you at next Europython. Bye, everybody. Thank you.